It's day six, day six. Are you as excited as I am? I hope you are because if you're watching this, it means you have made it to day six of our Life Simple 7 Challenge. So you should give yourself a round of applause, a pat on the back. You might do a couple of high kicks and steps. But whatever you do, make sure you celebrate you. It is no small feat that you have made it through this week. We are on day six. We have given you six ways so far, excuse me, five ways so far that you can live life simply. I know some of you are taking full advantage of this challenge. You are getting in there. You are checking in with your accountability partner. That's what it's all about. For those of you who are tuned in and you aren't really um, as verbal in the challenge, but you're watching, I hope that you are taking this information in. You're printing off the handouts, you're watching the videos, and that you use this to apply to your life. So, day number six has to do with cholesterol. And so we talked about, let's recap really quickly. If this is the first video that you're tuned in on, you want to go back and watch days one through five. Day one, we talked about, you may have them getting, moving, get active, becoming more active. It's the beauty in keeping all of your handouts, right? We talked about getting active on day one. Day two, we talked about eating better. So this was day one, getting active. Day two, eating better. Day three, managing your weight. Day four, managing your blood pressure. Day five, managing your blood sugar. And day six is cholesterol. So how many of you know what cholesterol is? How many of you have ever had your cholesterol taken? So we are finding that cholesterol is getting higher much younger so we are seeing some young children in their early teens actually starting with cholesterol problems and why it's because we are actually seeing the rate of obes obesity for teens and children increase as well so let's talk really quickly about cholesterol understand it just a little bit cholesterol is a fat substance that comes from two sources one you eat cholesterol and one your body just makes it so if you are blessed with high cholesterol by hereditary, that would be me, um, then that's something you can't necessarily change. Your body actually makes cholesterol. Um, and so you have to still do the things that it takes to decrease your cholesterol because you know that your body actually makes more than it needs. You also get cholesterol in food. And so it's found in foods from animal sources. Foods and animal sources, what are those? Those are meats, right? So food and animal sources. And it travels throughout the body. So you have good cholesterol you have ill bad cholesterol. So I teach my patients that your good cholesterol, HDL, you want high, H high, that's your good cholesterol. And LDLs, you want your L's low, L for low, you want your low cholesterol to be down. So H is for good cholesterol, HDL, LDL is for bad cholesterol. So your HDLs keep your LDLs from sticking to the artery walls and reduces the plaque buildup. So what increases your HDL? The very first thing we talked about, actually getting moving. So your activity actually increases your HDL. Remember we need good and bad cholesterol in our system. Sometimes you may not understand this when you get your values back. But you actually need good and bad cholesterol in your system because the good cholesterol helps to keep the bad cholesterol from sticking to your artery walls. And so this process lowers your risk for cardiac and stroke problems. Now, I do have a hereditary component um, of high cholesterol. However, I have been managing that, medically managing it for years with my diet. So when I first found out that my cholesterol was high was shortly after my mom had her stroke. And I decided to see what risk factors I had and figured out my cholesterol was high as well. And so I've been managing my, my cholesterol for years. I eat oatmeal regularly, a um, fair amount of physical activity. I watch kind of white things, mayonnaise, sour creams, um, things that are white that tend to have a lot of fat content. I try to eat low fat foods. And so because of that, I thought I was in pretty good shape. Well, those of you who know me and follow me, you know October 
was really one of those turning points by which um, I had an event that we all tried to prevent, right? So in our goal to prevent, I actually had one of those events that led to stroke. And even now, my cholesterol is still not high enough to the point where I would start a medication, but because I have already had a stroke, they have um, started me on statins of medicines, you may recall those, um, because studies show that people who are on statins of medicines and because it must be something that's hereditary in terms of my cholesterol buildup, um, that that is one thing that is going to decrease your risk. So you might say, you know what, I don't want to be on cholesterol medicine. Sometimes you have good numbers, as in my case. I did get my numbers under control with my diet. However, I did still have an event. And after the event, you still want to revert and do all of the preventative measures that you would as if you had cholesterol. So one of those things is that you take cholesterol medicine. The other one is that I take a blood thinner. Um, so that's just a little side about cholesterol and the importance of just making sure that you get it under control if you know you have known risk factors. So how many of you have ever had your cholesterol checked? I cannot find my values right now, but I've gotten mine checked within the last um, three months, probably because I just told you that I am now on some medication status post my stroke. Um, but if you haven't already, I want you to take this opportunity. You know what I'm going to say? If you haven't had your cholesterol checked in the last six months, because this is day number six, I want you to take an opportunity to go and get your cholesterol checked. Cholesterol is best checked in the morning before food. Why? Because there is some circulating levels of fat in most things that we eat except for water and except for black coffee. Um, so you can most times drink water and or black coffee before you get your labs checked, but cholesterol is one of those things that you need to be fasting for. And you need to be fasting because you don't want to artificially inflate um, your blood with things that you might eat. You'd be surprised people who come in. Are you fasting? No, I just stopped at McDonald's and got a sausage biscuit. Or I just stopped at Bojangles and got a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. Yeah, that's probably not going to be the lab you want to get, not this day. Let's try again another day. So cholesterol will be one of those labs that you want checked with an um, empty stomach or you can drink water. You need to know your numbers. So again, we talk all the time about knowing your numbers. It is very important that you know your numbers. Why? Because when you know better, you do better. I call it the triangle. Is this a triangle? The triangle. At the top of your triangle is blood pressure. Here's blood sugar, and here's cholesterol. When one of those points on a triangle gets out of whack, they all get out of whack. So it's very difficult for me to control a patient who has high cholesterol. It influences their blood pressure and their blood sugar. So if I can get one under better control by influencing the other, then I have better outcomes with getting all three. It's difficult to get somebody with high blood sugar, their blood pressure under control, if their sugar is not under control. So you want to make sure that you look at those three parts of the pyramid, that's just how I train my patients, so that you will know if one thing is out of whack, then it influences the other parts of the pyramid. So you want to track your cholesterol with personal at-home charts. So see what your cholesterol is. This did not give your numbers, but I like for your total cholesterol to be less than 250, excuse me, less than 200. If your total cholesterol is over 230, you probably are someone who needs to be on medicine, okay? Um, and so in between 200 and 230, I generally give patients a little bit of grace. So I give you some grace to kind of get your diet under better control, um, to see what it is you need to change. If you're eating some of those whites, mayonnaise, sour cream, dollops of this, you want to change to low fat or eradicate those things from your diet. Your LDL, you want your LDLs, I like them less. So the, the lower they are, the better. Some places will say 120. 100 is now the new indication because, again, the lower they are, the better. So LDLs, you want low at 100. HDLs, you want high between 40 and 60. So you want high between 40 and 60. How do you raise your HDL up? Actually exercising. So if you get your blood cholesterol checked and your HDL is low, I typically know if somebody is being active or not because they can have good cholesterol but their HDL be low. That means they really not are not that active. They may be luck of the draw, not um, 
having the hereditary component of cholesterol or they may not eat a lot of fatty foods. We talked about that um, fats are, come from animal sources. So it, oh, milk is another one. So I drink almond milk now. So to influence my cholesterol some, I drink almond milk now. Um, actually at the beginning of the year, I stopped eating most meats. I went for a month, a little over a month and I didn't eat meats at all. I have added back some um, chicken and some turkey and some fish. Y'all saw me eating fish last night. But I'm not eating pork or red meat. Um, why? Because I am trying to influence my cholesterol. If I had good cholesterol before, I have got to have better cholesterol. I've got to have the best possible. And now, y'all, I'm from the country. And so I love, 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 love some meat. And so it's something that I never thought that I would be for the month of January. Again, I didn't eat any meat. That was something that I just decided to do um, to see if it was going to influence my numbers in any ways. I do still need to be on the medication just because the research shows that just the medication itself has some effects that the numbers don't show. Um, and so I will stay on it for that cause or that reason, but I must say that I am um, taking kind of that step to help improve my particular numbers with my diet. Now, does it mean that I don't cook that for my family? Absolutely. You know, they want pork chops. They still want some burgers every now and then, but that's just for me. And so you have to sometimes do things that are a little bit different, do things that are um, more in line with what you need to see if you can get some different results. Excuse me. Um, so those are the things that I'm doing. I'm trying to get my exercise in. So tips for success. We always talk about tips for success that are located on this side. Eating better. So I have added lots of fruit and vegetables. So during the day, I typically eat the majority of fruit and vegetables. If I eat meat, I generally don't eat meat until the afternoon or at night. Um, and so again, that's just something personal that I have adopted because I'm on the quest to try to eat a diet that's rich in fruit, vegetables, and whole grains. Again, low-fat dairy, or I switch to almond milk, poultry, fish, nuts. I still eat my oatmeal, but I actually put um, almonds and a nut mixture on top of my oatmeal. So you want to limit sugary foods, which we talk about anyway, sugary drinks, fat or processed food. I talked to you about that too because we know they're full of sodium and salt. So none of this is new information, right? It's the same old, same old. It's still applying to every aspect. That's why it's so simple. That's why it's so simple because it's the same information over and over and over. Get active. Physical activity, y'all, I cannot stress enough. I cannot stress enough that physical activity has so much of an importance in your life. If you can only get 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes per day, we talked in day one about how much you actually need, but your physical activity gives you so much bang for your book. It's something that you can't take an appeal. It makes sure that you, uh, physical activity just does so much. And so your cholesterol is one of the things that's influenced in your physical activity. I told you that it increases your good cholesterol. It influences your weight, your blood pressure, and it actually decreases your stress level. So physical activity, no matter how much you can get in a day's time, is very helpful. Um, know your fats. So the fats you eat can affect your cholesterol. You want to replace saturated and trans fats with monosaturated and polyunsaturated fats. That's a lot to remember. So that's why you have these handouts so that you can see, yep, that is what I should be eating, that's what I shouldn't be eating. Also mention, I think that I'm trying to eat things that are limited to just three um, ingredients. That's going back to me trying to eat more grains, more fruit, and more vegetables. So I am trying to not eat a lot of processed foods, things that are um, grown, from the earth or dirt, that's what I'm trying to do. Now, I know some people who are hardcore vegetarians, vegans, I'm not proclaiming or professing to do that, but what I am trying to do is make sure that I'm doing the things that I know will help to lower cholesterol, and that is what I know to do. Take your medication. If you're on cholesterol medicine, take it. Take your cholesterol medicine. More than likely, you're on a statin. Statins have benefits far beyond what you can see in the numbers. They actually influence the um, blood and the way that you accumulate plaque in your system. 
there is one called Cresta that actually decreases that plaque um, that has built up. So you want to take that medication if you have been prescribed, as I have. You want to quit smoking. Are there any smokers among us? Are there any smokers among us? You want to quit smoking because smoking is going to, in addition to the plaque, help make the walls of your arteries and your vessels very, very small. And that's not what you want. You want your walls to be large enough so that blood can flow through. So this has been an interesting conversation about cholesterol. I hope you take this opportunity to get your cholesterol checked. Know your numbers. If you have had your cholesterol checked within the last six months, then that is absolutely wonderful. Share those numbers with us if you feel so inclined. If you haven't had your cholesterol checked, make it a point to go somewhere and get them checked. If you are in and around a minute clinic, I happen to know personally that they are able to check your cholesterol. If you are in your primary care, um, if you are going to see your primary care, ask to get your cholesterol checked. Remember, you need to go in the morning because you need to be fasting. So, that has been day six, our conversation about life simple seven. I hope you all are enjoying this challenge. I'm actually using it to implement some more things into my lifestyle. And so all we ask is that you keep life simple, that you add these simple steps into your daily routine to build up to the great end. And that is actually for you to live a healthy and a longer life. So stay tuned for the Q&A tonight and make sure you join us for the seventh day, which is tomorrow of Life Simple 7. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.